In my most recent episodes, I've focused on guiding you guys through some very useful farms, most notably the automatic slime, frog light and honey farms. In the next few episodes, I plan to put these resources to use by renovating, expanding and developing my survival world. This tree for instance, I loved it initially, but now I find it boring. So I have some big ideas on how to improve it and change its look completely to something a lot more stylish. However, before I make changes to it, I'm going to be focusing my next two episodes developing this area into a bee district. Here I will create a giant honey dipper that contains an automatic honeycomb and honey bottle farm. And if you don't know what a honey dipper is, google it. <laughs> and over here is the focus of this episode, where I will create a bee breeding area inside a honey storage building. Oh, and for those of you who are only here to learn about bee breeding, it's straightforward. You enclose two bees to prevent them from leaving, feed them any type of flower, and voila, you have a baby bee. Bees can be bred every five minutes, and it takes about 20 minutes for a baby bee to grow up into an adult. Keep repeating this process and ensure that there are enough hives for the bees to live in. And before jumping into the build, I just wanted to ask if you can help support my channel by liking this video and subscribing to see my future content. I literally couldn't do this without you guys, so thank you. I think to start, I'm gonna have to come over here and start doing a little bit of landscaping. I have done a serious bit of deforestation. Put it all into my wood storage. Uh, while I'm here, I actually want to see how much acacia I've got. And I've got a decent bit, and I, ha I don't think I've used acacia in any of the builds to be honest. But I know I cut down a whole bunch of trees, and I also destroyed a whole bunch of acacia villages that I came across. So I do remember stocking up a little bit, which is great because part of this build is going to involve acacia. I think I've cut down enough trees, so the next part is going to be to level out this entire area. I started building the walls for the perimeter. I have raised it compared to the rest of the land because the rest of the land is quite flat. So now I've got a little bit of an elevated area. I have a general idea of what I want the bee breeder to look like. I want it to be like one of those in-ground bases where you can look down into the base from the surface level. I'll use flowering exalia leaves to outline my shape. And the shape is going to be something similar to a honeycomb, not quite a circle, just to keep in with the bee theme. I believe that is fairly hexagon shaped. Now I will lay out some glass. Another thing that we see with these in-ground bases are supporting beams. So it looks like the, the top of the base is being supported by beams like this. I think that's okay. Let's replicate with the rest. Now I could put glass in these sections as well. It looks okay. Let me try something else. If I use alternating half slabs like this, it will create a little pattern. Oh, that is way nicer. I think now we can make some lamp posts. Start building this. See how tall we want it. Put some uh, trapdoors. And now some grindstones. And lastly, some lanterns. And this is looking pretty good. Now for a final touch. Very nice. Now it's just a case of turning this into path blocks. Right, this is looking pretty epic. Now it's just a case of digging out a big hole underneath this and then creating our walkway into it. Well, I've dug out some of this, but from underneath, I'm getting a little bit confused with the actual shape. So I'm going to replace all of these with some spruce planks. And that way, when I'm underneath, I can see the actual shape that I need to cut out. Okay, that is far better. And there is the shape. Before I finish digging this hole, I just thought I'd tinker with the ceiling a little bit. Well, I have done the basic layout 
for this bee breeder area. Well, in actual fact, this room is going to be the bee breeder. The rest of this room is going to be uh, designed to look nice and naturey, and it's going to have some storage and other things for my honey related items. What I need to do right now, because this room is going to be full of beehives, and I have no beehives. I'm going to have to go and create an automatic bee farm right now, so that way I can start collecting that honeycomb to create those beehives with. So I have three beehives, which means I can make a farm that consists of three beehives. Although actually we need to uh, get rid of these ones because uh, I've got to put the nests inside in a second. Let's load this up with shears. I have the free nest, but I want to go and breed the bees. It's actually getting dark now, so I might be too late to do this. It needs to be daylight when I breed them, but it needs to be nighttime when I harvest that the nest so that this, the bees are all stuck inside the, uh, the nest. We have six bees right here and we want to have nine. So let's spread them like this. But I also now have enough honey for one more beehive. So now if I breed them one more time, which I can do in five minutes, and then I can extend the farm that I just created by one. I didn't realize, but I actually had enough honeycomb to make another two hives. So now we've got an extra three and that will expand our farm even more. Breed again. It's hard to count the bees now. Well, there's too many of them, but I still don't think we have enough. Okay, it is now nighttime. And if we go in here, we can see that we have all these bees still flying around, which means that these hives and nests are full. So we can take them with silk touch. While it's still nighttime, we need to lay these hives and nests down. So that way the bees will not escape because they'll be sleeping inside the hive. Now we can lay down some flowering azalea leaves and enclose them in glass. That's the farm complete. Hey guys, I'm in the editing booth and I've just realized that I messed up on some of my recording. This segment is demonstrating interior design techniques and I've just illustrated how to convert columns using barrels, signs and buttons. And what a difference that has made already. The next thing I'll do is look at little areas like this. Got these one block gaps. In this scenario, I'm going to put ender chests. Since this design is very symmetrical, I only really need to design one side and then repeat that on all of the other sides. I'm going to put some chests here the storage because this is going to be mainly storage for all the bee related items and right here we'll put something a little bit gardeny like we'll close it off like this looks like flower beds and we can actually put some flowers inside like this just to speed the growth process that's what that will look like and now i'm looking at this corner and i'm feeling like okay this is quite bland so what can we do we can put some fences like that and already this side is just looking incredible. It's looking busy, it's looking detailed. There's some atmosphere in there right now. Now it's a little bit dark in here, so we can add some light in these sections like that. And it's night time right now, so I think I'm gonna come in here and change this entrance while all the bees are sleeping. I think that's okay for now. Next, I want to find the central point, which I think is about here. And I'm gonna put a tree. Mm, is that center? No, that's the center right there. So I need to go one over. So this should be the center. And then I want to build a little tree like this. Like so. And we have a nice little tree right in the middle. And next I have kept this area open here so I can put a little feature like this. A little piece of furniture. And I like to put these types of things all around the map. I'm going to put a armor stand here, and this is basically going to be for the beekeeper's outfit. There's not really a beekeeper outfit in this game, but with the new armor trim update, so I might be able to find something that looks a little bit something like a beekeeper would wear. Bookshelf in here, crafting table up here. Since we don't have a crafting table in this room, put a lantern on here and a flower pot with a flower right here. Now I'm feeling like this floor is too empty. So I'm going to use composters. Now I want to decorate this floor area, but before I do, I want to do something about the upper level. So I'm going to put some scaffolding down, and I'm going to put some glowberries on these corners. And I'm going to make it so that they come all the way to the ground. I like this, but I don't like it going into the uh, flowering azalea leaves. So I think I'm just going to get rid of these. Oops. 
and just have two like that and then this can come all the way to the bottom and the benefit with this as well is they light up the room nicely that looks really good but it looks a bit bland by itself so i think what i'll do is i'll add a one more behind it and I'll bring this one to the ground as well. And we light some of them up. Don't need to light all of them up. If we light all of them up, it might look a bit too much. And if you're wondering how to get more of these berries, it's quite simple. Just bone meal them and you'll get as many as you like. Next, let's put some flowering azalea leaves around the room at the top. So put some leaves like this going around. Down here we can go down a little bit like that and maybe even throw some acacia buttons in here like that and there we go the design looks very random which makes it look even more unique and for the final part of this build to bring it all together is the floor now just so we know this area over here is going to be an entrance into another location in the future but for now what we're going to do is we're actually going to Gonna design a pathway kind of just spread out dirt blocks like this areas where you, you might expect people to walk so people would walk here and here and then to get there they'd kind of like come from here this is called the path of desire it's where people will walk naturally if they're unobstructed now we get some bone meal and we just bone meal everywhere now what i'll do is go around and get rid of all the tall grass we don't want any tall grass in here well maybe we can leave one or two but mostly we want them all to be gone now we can start placing flowers randomly spread out And just look at this room. It is incredible. There is so much life in here now. We just need one final touch and that is going to be a bee nest right there. And But as it's stormy outside right now, the bees are not coming out. They prefer to stay inside. So we will have to wait until the next day to see them fly around. And I've just collected the honeycomb from the bee farm and I want to create some hives, as many as I can make still might not be enough for this room so in this room we just want beehives everywhere oh yes definitely not enough well i'll have to finish this room later because it's going to take me a while to fill out every single one of these spaces with beehives and guys thank you so much for watching if you like this video hit the like button if you want to see future content and subscribe see you in the next one